This week it's Toyota's Kluger Hybrid Grande. In the few years since we last tested the first car, not a lot's changed. There's been updates here and there, but the big one was the dropping of the V6. It was incredibly thirsty, as beautiful as it was to drive. This is the 2.5 hybrid, but there's also a 2.4 turbo four cylinder. The looks are still pretty conservative, but look, that means that it appeals to a wider bunch of people. And of course, every single Toyota Kluger is seven seater. I'd rather an option to get rid of the third row. And it's only when you're standing beside it that can tell how really huge this is. The back seat, positively capacious. I'll show you that room in a minute. Uh, and look around the back, this 80,000 plus on-road car has an electric kick to open tailgate for keys in the car because I've got the air conditioning going because it's still a fairly warm day. Inside the rear, there is plenty of space. There's a pull-up area for tools and junk to repair kit and so forth. Also stored under there is the cargo hold cover that uh, fits into the back. You can see there's JLB speakers here. But watch what happens when I pull this seat up, like so. Most of the cargo area is chewed up by that third row of seats. And of course, it does take up a bundle of space under the floor as well. I just can't make a case for a third row of seats if you don't have a big family. I'm not quite sure how I feel about white upholstery, but you know, there you go. You can adjust the seat back up and down, which is lovely. A couple of side shades and this genuine fake artificial wood panelling. There's another single zone of climate control in the back. Uh, a couple of USBs there on the floor. And the floor is lovely and flat. There's just this little tiny hump. And even with this glass sunroof, there's plenty of headroom as well. And just in case you thought there were no vents, they're up here at roof level. Biggest thing to see here in the front seat though, is the new dash. The digital dash can be configured in different ways and it shows the lane markings for lane departure and lane centering, etc. And you can also have it register what power is doing. So as you're driving along, that goes from engine to battery and which of the all wheel drives it's powering, etc., etc., etc. It is really very clever. There's also traffic sign recognition. I don't know if you can see it, but look, just there is the head up display. You can open up the sunroof and shade with those two buttons. There's a slidey center console for your charger and a deep space down underneath. My fear about using the charger is that I'd forget my phones in it. There's buttons for EV in trail mode, auto brake hold, the parking brake and traction control off. And then there's some sports modes over here, sport, normal and eco. And in front of the coffee cups, there's some USB chargers and the 12 volt outlet. Very cleverly, there's a little thing here in the dash so you can put your phone cord up through that and put your phone in this tray if you'd rather have it here instead of the center console because this does have wireless carplay but it also has wired carplay and you'll see now that it's come up with my wireless carplay the mirror of course is one of those auto dimming things unlike the jeep we had last week it's not a camera display which is quite sad now over those quite rough bumps this thing is very smooth the ride is absolutely lovely. I did spill a little bit of my coffee then. There's a big hullabaloo when you put your foot down, but you'll see doing the speed limit, it is incredibly comfortable. And the thing about zipping around the corners, and this is just in normal mode I might add, is that although it's only a 142 kilowatt car, it feels quite nippy. The thing we have to remember about Kluger is who it's aimed at. And it's aimed at a family. It isn't aimed at a single gay man or a, even a gay couple. It's aimed at someone that has soccer practice and children and what have you. The fuel economy so far, as I said, hasn't been what I would call stunning for a hybrid. It's around seven litres per hundred kilometres. And although this is a really big car, it is a hybrid and I did expect more. Or should I say less? Before we leave the handling, if you do hit, encounter a, a little bump in a corner, there is a little skippity dude out of the side, and that's because this is quite a tall car. 
Before we move on, I want to touch on a comment that we received on one of the previous videos. And it was about having a sandwich and about my vape being in the picture when I was doing the interior shot. Well, do you know what? That's how people use cars. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But don't leave a comment, you feckless moron. If I want to eat a sandwich, I'll eat a sandwich. Okay, let's get on to equipment. This thing is extremely well equipped. Apart from the zone of climate control in the rear, there's another two in the front. As well as that, there's heated and cooled seats and that venting, wafting little bits of crisp air up the Kyber is so refreshing on a hot day. I know I used to hate it, but I'm a convert. It always used to make me feel like I've wet myself. The ride on this reasonably well-kept road is wonderful. It's really smooth. And the amazing thing about a car that's this big compared to the large SUVs we've had over the last few weeks is this feels incredibly light. And when I say light, I mean it feels city car light. The steering's light. The acceleration is nippy. It just feels nippy. And the other thing that you notice is this is really quiet. Not ghostly quiet, but it is calm and restful. And I do like the fact that I can get the seat into a really good driving position. I've just got it set, you know, so there's quite a lot of space between my head and the top. I could have a little bit higher, but then it's a little bit difficult to get in. Accelerating onto the freeway. Look, it's a, a leisurely affair and it's a CVT. I know you do get quite a lot of boost from the hybrid system, but look, it, it's not built for speed. It's not built for quick acceleration. It's built for comfortable highway cruising. Now that I've hit 100, I'm going to hit the cruise control. Now the cruise control is set. Let me just bring it up to 110. There we go. I've gone into the settings and I've activated all of the safety gear. There's lane keep assist and there's lane trace assist. And that's keeping me centered within the lanes. And I can see on my graphic on the windscreen that the white lines have blue lines outside them. And that means my lane trace assist is working. One thing I've noticed with Toyota cruise control is that the smart cruise control in particular has made leaps and bounds over the last few years. Going downhill as we are now, it's keeping me really right on the speed limit. So I want to run through a couple of the other things. The sound system is brilliant. I'd demonstrate it for you, but of course YouTube will have a fit. I like these two big 12.3 inch screens. I, I think that's the least you can expect in a car that costs this much. You can't see it, but the heads up display, no, it's almost as wide as the digital screen itself. The other thing is that the rear seat entertainment system has been ditched. And I think from memory, it was one of the ones that was in the roof. It came down, I don't think it was on the back seats. And my feeling about those is now, look, if you've got kids, they're going to be in the back. They'll have their pads and what have you, or their phones, and that's what they'll be either playing games on or watching a video on. A rear seat entertainment system is completely unnecessary. All right, now I've got the lights are in fully automatic mode. They've come on, so that means uh, at night the high beam will come on as well, should I need it. I think this looks really pretty. The buttons on the steering wheel are backlit. So to wrap up, Kluger Grande Hybrid does give you a lot for your money at $78,000. The range starts at, I think, around $50,000-ish for the two-wheel drive model. There are a few things that I'm glad to see that this car now has in it. I've touched on the digital driver's screen, which I think is very, very good indeed. I'm glad to see that this on the top model, the center screen, that's also bigger. The JBL sound system, excellent. The hybrid system, well, that's something that Toyota's been tweaking for a long time, and they really do have it right. It spends a lot of its time in EV mode, especially around town, and it lights where it counts. That's all this week from Toyota's Kluger Grande Hybrid. As always, leave a comment, 
hit like and just over there to subscribe.